again while we're waiting for President Clinton to arrive for this rally at Salem High School. Uh, Republican presidential candidate Pat Buchanan was meeting with members of a Rotary Club in Merrimack, New Hampshire. We'll show you the entire speech later on here on C-SPAN. You can check our programming schedule for the exact time of that. But prior to the event, here's what happened. Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Good to meet you, sir. Pleasure. How are you? Very nice, thank Good. you. Good. We meet again. Good, Good to see you. Hi. Nice to have you here. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Pleasure. How are you guys doing? How are you doing? Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you. Pleasure. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, Steve Brooks. Okay. Hi, Greg. Good to see you. Pleasure. What number stop is this this morning? This is. We've done two radio shows, but this is the first uh, first speech. There aren't too many rotaries that get up earlier than this. Mr. McKenna, what I'm going to know is I'm going to run the meeting. We have some rotary business that we take care of. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll uh, I'll get you on uh, for uh, about 35 minutes. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll speak fairly briefly, about 10 minutes at most, and I'll take questions. That's wonderful. Sure, I'd be happy, because I want to figure out what you, what's on your mind. That's fine. All right. Um, great, and what I'll do is when it gets, uh, we adjourn at about 8.30. When it gets to uh, be about that time, all I'll do is I'll just stand up over in this section, and then you can wrap it up yourself. OK, fine, fine. What time do you got? OK, good enough? Uh, what's that? Good. Yep. OK. Wonderful. Have a seat. Mm -hmm. Used to be all boys, but four years ago. Discarded. Millions of American families still work harder and harder, and they don't have access to health care. That's one thing I tried to do that I didn't get done, and I'm not ashamed that I tried, and neither is the First Lady. Millions of Americans work hard and don't have access to a pension, or they can lose it if they move from job to job. There is a lot of anxiety out there, as well as all this opportunity. And even though the crime rate is coming down, we know it's still too high. Even though these other indicators I mentioned are coming down, we know we still have serious social problems. So I say to you, as you look ahead, the issue is, what should we do now? I would argue we should build on the successes of the last three years and keep going in the right direction until we have dealt with these problems in an adequate fashion, until we have seized our opportunities, until we make maximum use of what is before us. That is what we ought to do. What we should not do is take a change of course and follow a direction that we know has no chance of working. What we need to do is bear down and go forward. There are those who say that this is a question of should we solve these problems through big government or not. That, my fellow Americans, is a myth. When I came here four years ago, I said, if you will vote for me, I will reduce the size of the federal government by 100,000 and put another 100,000 police officers on the street. Well, we're putting another 100,000 police officers on the street, but we reduce the size of the government by 200,000. And it'll soon be 300,000, and it's the smallest government we've had in 30 years. There is not a big government issue out there anymore. The real issue before us, as I have seen as I've traveled around New Hampshire today, and I have gone into factories, I've looked at apprenticeship programs, I've been in an elementary school and looked at a computer program, I've seen this, the, the Concord schools hooked up to the internet this week. In March, 20% of the schools in California at one time will be hooked up to the internet. By the end of this decade, we are going to see every school room and every library in this country on the internet in the information superhighway. I know that. And Big government is not doing these things. The question is not whether we should have big government or not. The question is whether we are going to go forward by working together in which every part of our country 
and every element of our society, including your nation's government, does its part, or whether we're going to go back for a time to a time when people were told to fend for themselves. If you look at this room tonight, if you think about this community, if you think about any endeavor you have ever been involved in that really worked, what works is when people work together, when everybody has a chance to fulfill their God-given abilities, when everybody works together, we all do better individually. That is the issue before the American people. Are we going forward together as a community to solve our problems? I was, when I came in, they gave me a cap for your football team, state champion. It had 12 and 0 on it. And I imagine, like every good team, the team has some stars. But let me say this there's not a halfback in America that can run without a line. Uh, there's not, there, you can't do it. You watch the Super Bowl, it was a great football game. There's some great stars out there. It was a contest of teamwork. And that's the way nations are. You gotta get all your players on the field. Then you gotta make sure they're properly trained. Then if they do what they're supposed to do, there has to be some kind of reward. And the only way it ever works is if they're all working together. That is the issue for America today. Whenever a country goes through a period of sweeping change, and all the balls get thrown up in the air, there will be winners and losers. But for a nation to be everything it ought to be, everyone has to have a chance to win. And that can only happen if we go forward together. That is what I want you to believe. First of all, this country has one big piece of unfinished business. We have cut the deficit in half in three years, and that is good. We never had a permanent deficit at a high level until the 12 years before I became president. We are turning that around. We are coming down. But we have to finish the job. We have to adopt a credible, balanced budget plan. What will happen? Just think what happened in 1993 when we cut the deficit in half. What happens? If people know you're going to balance your books, Interest rates go down, car payments go down, home mortgage payments go down, credit card payments go down. Businesses find it easier to borrow money. They invest, they create jobs. Families find it easier to make ends meet. This is an important thing to do. 